Hello, this is Reza Lat from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about one of the ways that we use to combine two tables together called append and how this is different from uh, other methods that we use um, such as merge. And mainly in this video, I'm going to talk about the tips that you need to know, the tricks that you need to know to get the append working uh, when you are combining two tables in the append mode. What are the things to know, like column names, column numbers, uh, and like removing duplicates after that. Let's go and check it out through an example in this video. Okay, so let's start with what is append and why do we need that. In Power BI or in Microsoft Fabric, the data flow part of Microsoft Fabric, when you are doing some data transformation, data preparations, one of the actions you can do is to combine data tables together. Uh, for example, data comes from this Excel file, you want to combine it with that Excel file, uh, you have the budget information of uh, last year and the budget information of this year, you want to combine them with, uh, with each other so that you have one budget table uh, and scenarios like that. In Power BI or in Microsoft Fabric, there are two ways that you can combine tables together. One of them is called append, the other one is called merge. I have a full video explaining about their differences, but in this video, very short, I'll explain that merge is a scenario that you have some of the information, some of the columns in one table, some of the columns in another table. For example, your customer table, their phone number, their, um, their location, uh, address is in one table, their first name, last name is in another table. You use uh, a link field such as customer ID to join the two tables together and combine them. This way of combining is called merge, which is not what I'm going to talk about in this video. Another way of combine is when you have the same information in two different tables, but the data is different. For example, you have budget information of last year and budget information of this year. This is like exactly the same structure. Um, you have the budget value, you have the department, you have some of the information, but last year and this year their data is different. So you want to combine them in one table in a consolidated list um, so that you have one budget table that you can use it in Power BI. That is called append. Append from, like, if you come from database background, this is what we used to call union all, uh, when we combine two different sources together. So let's go and talk about this append as an example. When you append two tables together, there are a few things that you need to consider. I'll switch to my screen in a second. Okay, so here is my screen. Here I have two tables. Now, first I start to combine two tables that they don't have exactly the same structure so that you see what happens when something like this happens. So you see here I have movie information from a website called Box Office Mojo. I have rank of the movie, title, uh, worldwide lifetime gross, which is sales, and the year of the movie. In another table, I have, this is coming from IMDb website, I have rank of the movie, title of the movie, the rating of the movie, and year. As you see, in one of these I have rating, in the other one I have worldwide lifetime gross. So this would have been a good example to merge, but I just want to show you what happens when we append these together, uh, so that you get the idea of when you append tables with not exactly the same columns, what is going to happen. So I'll go to one of these tables, I'll go to append queries, uh, and I do that as append as new. The append as new would create a new table, whereas append would just change the existing table to be the result of the append. So I'm appending these two tables together. When you append them, the process is quite simple. Uh, first, when you append tables from two different data sources, you might get this uh, data privacy label uh, details, which I'm going to say ignore that. This is telling you that you are getting data from two different sources. Be careful that one of them might be uh, organizational data, the other one public data. Make sure that you are not combining data at different privacy level, which is not the topic of this, uh, this video. So here I have the appended result. And uh, you see I have more columns than what I used to have in each of those tables. In each of the tables, like in this one I had four, in the other one I also had four but the append, I have seven columns in the result. When I look at the columns information, rank column, you see this little green bar 
at the top of the column. This tells you um, about the quality of your data. So this, this shows that the rank column is full green. This means I have all the values in there. But title, you see I have like half of the value, but not the other half. Uh, when I hover on it, it tells me like 250 values are valid, 200s are empty. When I go to rating, similar to that, and year, and then title again. So here comes the interesting part. First, when you combine, uh, when you append two tables together, the first thing is that your columns should match. If you have a column in one table that does not exist in the other table, what is going to happen is that the append result would have that column, and that column's value for the records that does not exist would be null. So, for example, in Box Office Mojo movies, I had worldwide lifetime grass. In IMDb movies, I did not have that. So, what happens is that in the append result, I have that worldwide lifetime grass, but you see it is null for all the records coming from IMDb uh, table, and for all the records uh, that comes from Box Office Mojo, it has values, and that is why it is like half values are blank. Uh, that is happening when you append two tables together. So if you want to append and you do not want to have a column that has ha like half of the values, then you have to make sure that you are removing the columns that you uh, do not need. In this case, worldwide lifetime grass, I can remove that. Let's say I don't need this. I want a consolidated movie list. Uh, and rank also, I don't need rank too, I'm going to remove that, so I just have title and year, so title and year of the movie. In IMDb movies, same thing, I'll remove rank, I'll remove rating, I just have title and year. Now I still have the append result, I can go to append and see what it looks like, so I have less columns now, I have four columns, but still I have four, I do not have two, you see I have title and year, and I have title and year. Now here comes the second thing. So the, the second thing about the second tip about append is that your column names should match exactly. Their position is not important, like year to be the first column in every table, that is not important. But year has to be exactly spelled like that in each table. Power Query is a case sensitive language, so if year is lowercase y in one of the tables, capital case y in another, these are two different columns, right? You have to be careful about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go and check it. Here you see the title is lowercase t, in the other one the title is uppercase t, so if I go to append, that is why I see title with uppercase, title with lowercase. So instead of appending like this and then going and creating a column that says when this is null, go and use that value, when that is null, go and use this value, what I'm going to do is before append, I'm just going to make sure that they have exactly the same name. So here I would go and rename this, so this becomes title with capital case T. And you see the result is that I have one title column and it is full green, there is no blank value in there because it is matching. Same with the year, now I can go and do that with the year as well, you see year has capital case Y here lowercase, I'm going to change that. Now with this one it is quite interesting as well, so I'm going to change that. Um, you have to make sure that there is no space at the end, there is no like special characters because they might all affect here. So I have changed that and now you can see that the result of the append is exactly similar to the structure that I have in any of those tables. Uh, it is just a consolidated list. So two things so far, one, uh, so two things so far, one was that the, um, the column numbers better to match, otherwise you would have extra columns with some blank values in it. Uh, the column names should match, otherwise you would have duplicate column names, um, half of the data in one, half of the data in the other one. You will not get error for any of these, uh, unlike SQL Server or anything like that. Uh, it just works, but the data that you might get is not the data that you want, right? And then the last one about append is that when you append two tables together, Power Query is not going to um, remove the duplicates for you. This is just append. So if you, have a if you have a record exactly similar to that record, you have that in the other tables, like these two tables have uh, one of the records matching, the append would have two of that records. 
uh, it is not removing those duplicates. You have to do that yourself. So here you can see that in Box Office Mojo movie, I have 200 movies. In IMDb movies, I have 250 movies. The append result is 450. 200 plus 250, 450. Do I have duplicates in this list? Perhaps I do. Um, I, I can check that. So to remove the duplicates, first you have to make sure that they all follow the same lowercase, uppercase thing, because this is also important for the values in the column. Like if you have spaces, things like that, you have to make sure that you remove that. So here I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say, uh, and I have a separate video about things that you need to consider before um, removing duplicates. For example, one of the things is that you have to trim to make sure that there is no space before and after. Uh, another is that you might want to make it all lowercase or all uppercase so that they all match with each other and few other things like that. So once you have done that for the numeric values, you don't need to do that because numeric values, um, there is no space in it and lowercase uppercase doesn't really matter. So once you have done that, then we have to do remove duplicates. You have to select all the columns and then do the remove duplicates rather than removing duplicates for each column. Because if you select, for example, this column and remove duplicates, it will not consider year. It will consider that as the point of entry for checking duplicates or not. So in this case, I'm going to select them both using control A, or you can use this selector here and say remove duplicates from here. So either remove duplicate from here or select both columns or all the columns and say remove rules, remove duplicate. So once I've done that, you see that now I have 420 records, which is like 30 records less. This shows that I had uh, some duplicate values in this. Now this table is what I call as the append result. I'm going to call this all movies or something like that. Uh, and the last thing about append is that once you have appended, usually you won't need those tables at the start. Uh, if you just close and apply, this will load all the three tables inside Power BI, but then those two are extra tables. You don't need them. If you want to try like delete them, you would get a message that you cannot delete them because they are used for the all movies table. You can actually see them in the, um, in the query dependency that the data comes into those first and then goes to all movies. Query dependency is something you can see in the view, ta view tab. Uh, so what can we do? In this case, we can go and right click on these and uncheck this option, enable load. We have something similar to that in data flows as well. So uncheck that option and then I have just one table. When I say close and apply, when this data loads into Power BI, it would be only one table, all movies. The other two tables would participate in the refresh process. Data comes into those first, like a temp table. And then from those, it would get to the uh, last table. Combined version comes to the last table. So they are still part of the refresh process, but they are not getting loaded into Power BI uh, individually. As a result, you would um, save some of those space. When I go to the table view, I just have one table with all movies rather than three tables. Uh, so back to these three, um, these three tips that I mentioned to you, a summary of these uh, four tips, actually the summary of these four. When you are appending the tables, um, make sure that you have the same column structure, same column count, same column names, exactly matching column names. If it is lowercase in one place, uppercase in another place, make sure that you go and fix it. Uh, the next one is that after you do the append, you have to make sure that you remove duplicates unless you want the duplicates values to be there. Uh, so make sure that you go and remove duplicates. For removing duplicates, there are a few other actions you need to do, especially if you are removing duplicates from a text column and then also make sure that you select all the columns when you remove duplicate. And the last thing is that after you append the tables, after you combine the tables, the original tables, you want to uh, disable their load so that they don't get loaded into Power BI and that doesn't, extra, uh, doesn't cause extra usage of the memory when it is not needed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe into our video, uh, our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.